I'm joined by Owen Larkin to talk about the two All-Ireland semi-finals this weekend. Kilkenny against Watford, it has a nice ring to it. Like, Watford have been going well, and Kilkenny, some people thought that it was Galway's to win in that Leinster final, but Kilkenny found a way, and they're looking good. Yeah, they are, I suppose. Like, to, to win the Leinster final the way they, they play it, I suppose they'll be delighted, but obviously, Brighton lads won't be happy with the performance to win the Leinster final, but as we all know in Ireland, it's all about the... It's all about the the win at the end of the day, and you know they had two weeks now to prepare for for Waterford. But on the other hand, Waterford have been hugely impressive, I think, this year uh, under Dean Cal. They've, they've improved in every game, and they've had Waterford have uh, what they never had for the last 15, 20 years: the six scoring forwards. Now this year, are working extremely hard um, throughout the seventy minutes, and they're going to be a formidable side. Yeah, and you know when people talk about Kilkenny being a bit of a one-man team with TJ Reid, it probably seems like a bit of an insult to some of the other forwards. There's a lot of quality there. Absolutely, yeah. Look, I suppose it's no secret Colin Finley wasn't happy with his own performance the last day. Walter Welch was taken off. Um, and then you had the likes of Richie Hogan coming on. So, like, there is strength and depth there. Um, albeit, you know, TJ is probably the best hurler in the country, bar Tony Kelly, this year. Um, but he will need, he definitely needs a lot more help than what he got in the Leinster final. But you know, I suppose it's it's kind of set up nicely for Kilkenny. They didn't play well the last day, you know, point to prove. And you know, more often than not, when that happens, you know, Kilkenny get a performance out of what they needed on, on Saturday evening. Yeah, that's the thing. Like Galway had themselves in a winning position even after the two goals. And then if you jump back to the Dublin game, Kilkenny were sixteen points ahead, kind of coughed that up, and then late on, obviously won the game. Do you see any weaknesses in this Kilkenny team or do you think like every team has growing pains along the way when they're trying to become a top side? Well, like they're obviously a top side anyway, but you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah I, I, I genuinely think like the hurlers are there and I think the inexperience is maybe costing them a small bit. Now, you would probably say to me, you know, there's a lot of experience there and there is, you know, you have TJ Reid and Walter Welch and those type of lads, but you have very inexperienced players there as well. You will all are only as second campaign um, the two cornerbacks are the same they're, they're only playing this year for the first time I think so like, there is a lot of experience, inexperience there all Cody first year as well um, you know they'll, t- they'll need time to adapt but the longer they stay in the championship you know that experience and, and that know-how and know-how to win will will come to them and you know about better lads than, than Colin and, and TJ and, and Wally to bring those lads along but like it's going to be I, as a Kilkenny man, I'm very worried about this weekend because I've seen enough of water for this year to see their improvement with every game. You know, Liam Cal's stamp is on the team. And as I said before, they have six scoring fours, something they never had over the last 10 or 15 years. Yeah, but uh, like TJ Reid probably will, as ever, be the best player on the pitch. And with, like in terms of quality, he obviously has the most talent. But do you think uh, do you think Richie Hogan can start this game? Is he 70 minutes in him? I, I don't think so, and I think... Brian and probably Richie know that himself, themselves. The, the 70 minutes is not in them anymore. And, you know, maybe they're better off holding them like they did against Galway and then spring them, you know, if things are not going well. Um, as we've seen, you know, we all know what Richie Hogan can do. And as we've seen again the last day, um, you know, with the, the one two we got, like it was the win of the game. And, you know, it kind of sprang TJ into life a small bit the last day when he came on as well because TJ wasn't having the best of days from, from open play. But, when Trichy came on, got the goal, next ball came down, TJ caught into the back of the net. And two quick player goals, and, and that's actually Kenny up really. Because mm. for Richie Hogan, if that turnaround didn't happen the last day and the 1 2 more or less winning the game for Kilkenny, you know, he'd be kind of heading to maybe a disappointing latter stage of his career. There was the red card last year, coming on against Dublin and missing two handy points for him. So, kind of, it probably needed it too as well to make Kilkenny feel like they've got someone on the bench, but even for Richie himself and his confidence. Yeah, for his confidence, it'll be huge because, you know, he took a batter and after the after the All Ireland last year, you know, publicly and and everything, and you know, in fairness to him, he stayed quiet, didn't didn't moan or didn't give out, just went about his business this year, and you know, I, I've heard from a couple of lads, he's working really really hard, but look, you'd love to see him in for the seventy minutes if he was going to last, and you know, Kenny would be would be glad to have him for seventy minutes, but I just don't think it's in him with all the injuries he's after having. He's not that young anymore, and as you said, going to the latter stage of his career now. So, if he could come on with maybe 20 minutes, 25 minutes to go, and, and give what he gave the last day, 
you know, I think every Kenny person would be happy with that. Mm. And you know the way when you get to the latter stages of your career, like T J R E turned thirty three there in the last week or two. Can you still expect him to deliver? Like he's still probably the best player in the country. But like, can you still expect him to deliver every day when he's going to be targeted, possibly by Caleb Lyons in this game? Yeah, well, look, I, I think he'll expect to, to be able to deliver, but I think it's wrong for people to put that pressure on his shoulders as well because, you know, as you say, he's going to be targeted. You know, he's probably most talked about um, hurler in the country, you know, bar Tony Kelly this year. And, you know, everybody's going to set up a plan to try and stop TJ Reid. So then it's up to the other forwards to really step up and say, look, if TJ's getting held, we need to step up here and we need to do the business. Mm. Is it, are there any players in particular that you're worried about on this Waterford side? They seem to, this year, very much turn and go at their man. Even Stephen Bennett was saying that in the interview, that rather than going left and right and looking to pop a point, they're looking to turn and run straight down the throat of the defence. Yeah, well, like I said, like the six forwards that Waterford had, they're, they're very, very good. And I think Desi Hutchinson has been a huge addition to them this year as well. You know, probably didn't get the better of the cornerback last last week, but the two of them had a ding dong battle, and Izzy Hutchins still got two goals. Mm. You know, so and Kieran Bennett, a centre forward, is you know popping up with two and three and four points a game as well. So, but I think the find of the season for Waterford has been Caleb Blades. I thought he was phenomenal. I seen him a bit in the league early on in the year, and I just you know for for a lad that hadn't been hurt with Waterford, he just seemed to take over the pitch. You know, mm. he has. All the attributes you want, you know, he's the physicality, he has the athleticism, he's up and down the field, you know, he's a wing back, but he's up and down the field. But I, I, I just, I really like watching him play because he doesn't seem to have any fear, he just goes at, he goes at the ball, attacks everything, and I think he's been the find of the, find of the season for Watford. And in some ways, like some people are thinking, oh, it's a bit, a bit early for Watford, they're in their first season with Liam Cahill, they've had a couple of bad seasons, some new players. But like if you, if you jump back a few years ago, they won the minor All Ireland in twenty thirteen, under twenty one in twenty sixteen, and a lot of those players are there and they're in their mid twenties. So maybe it is time for them. Yeah, well, maybe it is. But I just thought again, Limerick the last day uh, or in the Munster final, I thought maybe if it was a year down the line, Waterford would have won that game because you know there's only three points in it with maybe seven or eight minutes to go, and what I thought Waterford slightly panicked. And started to go for goals when they could have been tapping the ball over the bar. Mm. So, but like they improved again the last day. You know, it didn't knock, it didn't knock at now. They just, you know, Liam, Liam Cal has a has a game plan and and the players are sticking to it. And you know, I think they're getting better and better with every game. Mm. And I I really expect them to get better than they were the last day on Saturday evening. And like I said, Kenny will have to be at the top of their game to win. And what do you make of Austin Gleeson being closer to goal? Like he started the game full forward the last day. He, he'll obviously switch position, but do you do you like him on the inside line? Yeah, look, he, he's popping up with three and four points every day. So I know one or two of them are side lanes, but still, I'd say Liam Khan is happy enough that, you know, he is, he's in the game a bit. I'd say he'd like to have him in it a bit more, but he needs a target man at the edge of the square too. And saying that he doesn't stay in there you know, an awful lot either. He, he kind of rambles around a bit as well. So, but look, I think they have to they have to find a position for him and leave him there and let him settle into it because by his own admission, he's been, you know, jumped around from Billy to Jack, centre back, midfield, centre forward. They don't really know where to play him. And I think if Liam Cal leaves him a full forward, he might be able to steady himself down and, you know, come in and out, uh, out a half hour line a couple of times and knock over a couple of points. Mm. What's the rivalry like with Watford? You know, they're obviously you're obviously neighbours with them, but at the same time, being in different provinces over the years, you wouldn't have met as often in Championship as you know you would have met maybe Wexford or Watford would have met Cork or whatever. So is is it a strong heated rivalry? I wouldn't say a strong and heated. It's probably more heated with the South Kilkenny people, you know, and the supporters kind of things like that. It'd be more heated that way. Obviously, you know, there is a bit of a rivalry there, but I think it's a healthy one. You know, I think there's respect there from, from both sides and um, once they get out in the field then they just go out and shake hands afterwards and everything is forgotten, you know. Yeah, more often than not you've you've had the edge over them. But the last one was that twenty seventeen, I think it was a was it a qualifier down in uh Thurless and oh, Wasford yeah. won that after after extra time. But before that you played in the in the semi finals the year before. So it was a draw of Croke Park one twenty one to twenty four. And then you beat them in Turles and Park Man. He had that last second free that Owen Murphy pulled out over the crossbar. Were, were you on the field at the, when that free was taken? Uh, I think it was. Yeah, <laughs> I think it was. But uh, like the first day, 
Waterford really should have won the game. They should have killed off the game. And they just left us hanging there. And you know, Kilkenny being Kilkenny, we, we snuck in with a goal and got a draw of it. And I think we were a different animal the second day. Mm. And I don't think we were ever going to be. I know Harry Manny had the, had the chance at the end, but um, we just mentally we were a different team from the previous weekends. We were never going to be beaten the second day. Yeah, like you've had some great games at the moment, even thinking back to that that epic game again in Turles back in 2012 when Kevin Moran got sick on the field as well. Like they generally yeah. do produce some great games. Yeah, that was 2013, I think, actually. Oh, okay. we, we played temporarily the previous week and that went extra time as well. You had to bring and, that one uh, up, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I had to get that, I had to get that thing about temporary in, yeah. <laughs> um, but like there, there, there were fantastic games, you know, our end end stuff. I know Waterford kind of play with a small bit of, bit of a sweeper at the moment, but I think that's just the way Ty Burke plays naturally, you know, he just kind of drops back and, and sweeps up there. I'm not so sure it's, a, it's part of their game plan anymore, you know, with regards to where Derek McGraw was, was with the team, but um, like, there's no there's no other side shows on the field, it's just, they just want to hurl and they just want to watch and, and things like that and, and that's they, they, those are the games that are a pleasure to be involved in. mm. and who do you think will be the key players in this or matchups and um, some people are talking about maybe martin keown trying to go in and occupy tag de borca maybe tj reed against caleb Lyons. is randall that standing out in this yeah i think whoever whoever is trying to nullify tag de borca i think he's had one of his best seasons even though he was he's after being very good over the last um couple of years but like the last two games is after being phenomenal so i think that someone will have to stand in on him i don't think he's going to be tj reed and um, i think he's too good of a hurler that you have to send a, send him in to nullify someone else so i think they'll try and play the ball short uh to tj and try and try to make time to work and come out on him um and i think that's the way that they, they, they'll try and play it i don't think they'll be lumping high balls in him on top of time to work for him to you know i suppose i was, I was going to say get the crowd going but Obviously, we won't have any crowd there, but, um, but Waterford lads like to do that as well to get the crowd going. And I'm sure they'll be, they'll be shouting from, from their homes if, if Tiger to work comes out with one of them. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, like for, from Kilkenny's point of view, now, this is a small bit tongue-in-cheek, but did, like the drive for five is on here. I mean, you need to be winning All-Ireland or it's five years in a row without one. Yeah, you had to bring that, up, that <laughs> one up as well, didn't you? I did, I did. Um, yeah, look, I suppose, you know, it's kind of... From, from previous years, it's nearly a famine down here that we haven't won in All-Ireland in, in four years. But look, I think I think this is probably their best chance. You know, they, they're kind of temporarily are gone. You know, they beat Limerick uh, last year. Um, so they'll have no fear about playing Limerick and they'll have no fear about playing Galway if they can go over Waterford as well. So I think this year probably is, is their best chance of, of winning one. They seem to have a settled team. Um, the younger lads are coming on. And they're winning games as well without playing well. So... Um, I suppose all the things are, are, are in their favour this year. And then on the other semi-final, Limerick against Galway, Limerick have been fairly imperious. They beat Clare and Tipperary very well, held off uh, Watford. They look like they're in great shape. They have the extra week as well. Yeah, they do, in fairness. I, I, I kind of, I picked Limerick at the start of the year to win the All-Ireland and I can't see, um, I can't see maybe Kilkenny Cotton a bit on the hop last year. I can't see him getting caught twice in, twice in two years, really, to be honest with you. You know, the team they have is phenomenal. The panel they have is phenomenal. They have five or six lads to come off the bench, you know, if things are not going well or, you know, just to freshen things up. And, you know, if you see, if you see, if you're playing car back and you're after, you're after dealing with uh, maybe Graham Mulcahy for 60 minutes and you see Seamus Flanagan coming on full of running, you know, you're in trouble then. So, and like I said, there's two or three more there as well, Pat Ryan and those lads as well. Um, like they have a phenomenal panel and they just seem to be you know they, I don't think they play it as well as they can play in the Munster final but you know I, I think once they get to Crow Park and, and they sniff an all Ireland final place and they'll produce performance mm. Were you impressed with Galway's win over Tip? Yeah I was I was um, I thought Tipperary would win it you know with about 10 or 15 minutes to go and obviously the send it off probably had a huge huge impact but my mind just drifted back then to the Wexford game last year when John McGrath got sent off for, t- for Tipperary and you know Tipperary just came out with all guns blazing and, and obviously went on to win that but you know like Tipperary are an agent team as well and 
Um, they have a lot of miles on the clock as well. You know, Parik Mar has been around for a, for a good number of years. James Camden the same. So I think maybe it's just the, the legs ran out of them, and, and you know, you know, it's hard to know how good how good Galway really are because they should have beaten Kilkenny and didn't, and you know, probably needed a man sent off against Tipperary to, to finish the job. So we'll see how good they are on, on Sunday. And uh, did you think it was a red card for Cahal Barrett actually? To be honest, to be, when I seen it in real time, I haven't seen the first. The second one was definitely a yellow card. Um, but the first one I thought in real time, I thought it was a yellow card. In saying that, I'm after getting hopped off on Twitter the last couple of days over it. But like Jake Morris was lucky to stay on the field as well. He was on a yellow card and swung out with Lad's neck as well. So um, I'm going to stand by it. I, I, I think he deserved a red card, whether it was that day or, not, or, or last September. I think he deserved a red card anyway. <laughs> Will you go away with that? <laughs> All right, so you're going to go with Limerick anyway. I go with Limerick, yeah. I, I just think they're. I can't see anything. I can't see anything stopping them, and you know, I definitely can't see Galway stopping. Them. Okay, well, right, brilliant stuff, Owen. Really appreciate you joining me. No bother, Shane.